Yeah, I'm Wally Rizaki, and I play the role of Chandler in Crushed. Um, it's a lot of fun because uh, I get to play sort of the comic relief. I get a couple neat scenes um, with Scott, who plays Wilbur. Uh, you know, this guy's having a hard time in life and dating and in general, and uh, all he has to look forward to when he comes to work every day is me and the other guys giving him a hard time. And so I get to kind of zing him a few times. And I got my own little quirky you know, sort of thing going on because I have this uh, idea that I can somehow actually get a date with Courtney Cox. That's my, uh, that's my quest, I guess, throughout the film. I'm always talking about her. Um, I, uh, I wasn't sure why that was in there originally. Then I figured out the whole Chandler, Joey, Ross. You know, it's a nice little kind of comedic you know, piece in there, but um, yeah, it, it, you know, it's a lot of fun. It takes a lot of pressure off you as an actor when you can just kind of sit there and give you know funny one-liners to Wilbur and um, you know sort of poke fun at him. This guy's going through a hard time, and I know people like that in real life. And I think I was one of those people, you know, back in high school in those days, you know, where you would take any opportunity when someone's down to maybe just kind of kick them and make people laugh while you do it. It's an awful thing, I know, but um, it's common, you know. Um, so yeah, Chandler's a lot of fun. Anything else for me to say? Tell me um, a little bit more how you um, became Chandler. Sure. How did you find this character? Right. After you landed the gig. Right. So uh, so initially, I got the call for the audition. Um, I hadn't met James before, but when I did, I quickly understood where he was coming from as a filmmaker. Um, I've actually been working as a producer for the last five years and just recently got back into acting and uh, it was refreshing to be sort of in the middle of an independent film that had everybody out there hustling and working and trying to get it done. You know, this isn't a big studio picture, it's, you know, um, it really kind of goes back to the grassroots of how films are made and when I got the role, he offered me the role, um, it's fun because when you don't have to produce a film and you can only act in it, you can spend some more time, you know, dissecting the character, thinking about it, and even if it is, uh, you know, sort of a, sort of a comic relief role uh, that doesn't you know, carry the entire film, it's fun to really kind of dissect it. And so, you know, as Chandler, I really did have fun, you know, thinking about what are some of the funniest moments, you know, what are the, you know, some of the funniest things I've heard people say at the wrong time, and. Um, you know, the scenes I have with Wilbur, there are many times where he needs, he needs someone to support him. He needs a shoulder to, you know, cry on. Um, he's looking for his friends at work to kind of be there and understand. But instead, I explored how I can make fun of him and make myself feel better. Um, so, so becoming Chandler, unfortunately, is very easy, um, you know, for me, you know, to become a funny jerk. It's... It's what we all kind of want to do sometimes, but we don't really have the opportunity. What's it like working with James and the rest of the production crew? How, how has that experience been? You know, working on Crushed has been um, a really, really you know, great experience. I've worked on a lot of sets and a lot of films, um, you know, fortunately, and you know, every film was different, but um, it's nice to be on a set where you don't have a studio you know, breathing down your neck, and you don't have a director that that uh, that doesn't trust his actors. And so, you know, James Cahill, he's a really, really great director. Um, you know, I like the you know he he sort of let us develop our own characters. Um, you know, not so much to where he said just do what you want, but when we showed up and when I met the other you know actors, um, you know Blair and Albert who play um, uh, who play Joey and Ross. We sort of, you know, quickly understood how we were different, and you know, uh, you know, we all kind of looked apart, but our personalities were also different. That we kind of, you know, tended to to make sure we were different in that way. And you know, James loved it. You know, James let us run with it. And you know, we, you know, as an actor, it's nice to make a suggestion and have your director, you know, be okay with it. And you know, you, if he doesn't approve it, at least it gives you a chance to try it. Um, and the entire crew, it's. Uh, it's a pleasure to work with you know people that know how to make a film, you know, because there's nothing worse than sitting around all day, you know, making something that's, you know, 
mediocre and the experience is pretty bad. So this is the exact opposite. It's been a lot of fun. Okay, so as our outro, uh, go out with and tell me why and the rest of the world should go see Crush. Okay. Lead back from me. Yeah, I will. Let me think here. No problem. Take yeah, it sure. Umbrella and action. Well, what I can tell you about Crushed is it's a film that will take you away from a lot of the things we're forced to deal with every day. Um, the last few films I've done have all been very heavy subjects. Uh, you know, dealing with politics, you know, dealing with a war. Um, and once in a while, I think it's so important that you just, you know, sit back and take your mind off everything and just laugh and have a good time. So, as an actor, it was great for me to, you know, to do that, um, to do that working on a film. Uh, you know, not worrying about the political implications. You know, worrying about the statement we're making in the world. It's more about just having a good time. Um, and for two hours of your life, you don't have to worry about anything, and you can just laugh your ass off. Um, at our goofy characters, you know, doing our thing. So yeah, you know, you know, just relieve yourself of the stress. You know, you, you know, stop thinking about your problems and what's going on for two hours and watch Crushed, laugh a little bit, have a good time, then return to the video store and go back to your worries. Cool. Uh, anything you want to add? And I think you made reference to some line your character. Oh made yeah, yeah. Why it was comical. Right. Let me know when you're ready. Yeah. Are you rolling? Yes. Okay. Well, you know, one of the, one of the funner, well, you know, one of the neat things on working uh, on a close, intimate set where the director is, you know, very open to, to, to suggestions and working with actors is, uh, you know, kind of playing around with some of the dialogue. And, you know, we're very lucky. Paul, um, um, our writer, was on set with us, which is a, a nice treat because you get to ask those questions that, you, that you're not sure about sometimes with the script. But there's a few moments, um, one in particular, there's uh, a line I have to Wilbur um, where I'm, in my own way, I'm trying to you know, basically you know, give him uh, you know, the hard truth, which is he's, he's, he's about as pathetic as they come. Unfortunately, that's you know, you know, the case for his character. But, but the way that I stated it, I, I thought it was hilarious because our editor um, was actually on set and, sorry, um, our editor was on set and I said this line where I, where I look at Wilbur and I say, you know what, they don't be, I'm sorry. Take it back, I'm sorry, take yeah. it back where Wilbur, there, he's just as pathetic as they come. Right. And then go into your spiel. Okay. Um, so in the scene, I'm trying to explain to Wilbur that um, he's about as pathetic as they come. And um, that was the exact dialogue. Uh, and our editor was on set, and he, um, he made a, a really funny suggestion because uh, the line was something about Jennifer Aniston liking the underdog. And rather than going into, well, you're very pathetic, we went ahead and said, it doesn't get any more under than you, dog. <laughs> it, was, it was funny because I don't speak that way normally. And, you know, I didn't really picture Chandler saying that, but it really just kind of came out and made the whole set crack up. And, you know, I figured if it made them laugh on the first try, that we should try it and hopefully it'll make you guys laugh. Cool. Okay, so state your name, your title. Okay. Yeah, my name is Kenny Krause, um, and I'm the director of photography on Crushed. I'm good, thanks. Cameras rolling and action from the top. Okay, hi, my name's Kenny Krause and I'm the director of photography on Crushed. Uh, today's our last day of uh, principal photography and uh, we've been shooting in and around the San Diego area. We're using the uh, Panasonic HVX200. It's a neat camera. It's smaller, uh, new high definition camera and uh, it's really been uh, a great tool for us to shoot this project. It's relatively inexpensive, it's small, and there's some shots that we were able to get with that camera that we wouldn't be able to get with a uh, you know, bigger camera. And uh, I don't know if you got a question, something. Uh, 
any particular approaches you use within independent filmmaking and uh, under okay. a restricted budget? Yeah. Well, this is you know really a very small budget uh, production, and so uh, you know we don't have access to a lot of the. Uh, you know, a lot of crew and a lot of the tools and things that you might have on a, on a larger film, but uh, we tried to work with what we had and try to, you know, make the most of a small crew and uh, the locations that we had. Some were uh, locations where uh, there were people having dinner, uh, real customers in the restaurant at the same time we're shooting our scenes, so that was a challenge. and. Uh, um, Kind of a, a neat, a neat, a different way to uh, to, to to do this, and uh, some interesting results along the way. How has your experience been with the uh, the P2, uh, the camera? cards, and all that? Yeah, I mean the the, the Panasonic HVX200 is a really a, a groundbreaking camera. I mean it's uh, the uh, older brother to the uh, DVX100, but it's got these uh, P2 memory cards where you can record. Uh, high def to the cards. Uh, that was interesting. We had to kind of work out our workflow and uh, figure out how to offload the cards and um, keep things moving. We uh, dedicated a person to that uh, very quickly on in the film and uh, with that we were able to uh, keep up with the pace of production. Um, and so far um, Hopefully, God willing, we haven't had any, any you know, dropouts or any kind of uh, corrupt files or any, uh, any problems at all with that. Do you have any in interesting points you want to share as far as working with standard definition and high definition cameras? Like any um, particular, uh, you know, challenges or major yeah, major I mean, well, the cases? challenge, well, the challenge, the challenge with high definition versus standard definition is always the focus is one thing and uh, the you know the, the Panasonic 200 camera is a great little camera the uh, you know the viewfinder is uh, it's a bit of a challenge to try to to make sure you're in focus and that's just you know I mean among the many other things that were going on with this small budget of film that was just another thing thrown in the mix um, and just another challenge to, to, to kind of work with Want to give us an outro and tell me and the rest of the world why I should go see Crushed. Um, Crushed is a small film, but uh, you know, it's a small film where a lot of people came together and really uh, put together a, really a super human effort, really to try to pull off um, a great f story, a great project with very little means and just a lot of uh, you know hard work and determination, a lot of. Uh, um, a lot of collaboration, and uh, it's a great, sweet, funny, touching film, and uh, we had a lot of fun making it. Was there any uh, scene that that was uh, resolved quickly? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, uh, the you know night exterior uh, scenes are, are are always challenging, and. Um, we didn't have a lot of the resources that we may have wished for. We didn't have, uh, you know, condors or, uh, or or ways to get lights up high in the sky. We didn't have big lights, but uh, we made the most of our locations, and uh, we had a balcony where we could get our lights up a little bit higher and try to make that work for us. And uh, we had uh, one night where we had uh, three scenes to do, and we we're up against the you know sun rising and we uh, ran over to our uh, third location for that e for that night and um, you know things just worked out great things worked uh, the, the practical lights the lights that were in the scene um, matched with what we had done earlier and uh, it was just kind of a happenstance a great um, things coming together working out and uh, that worked out well Last question, any uh, basic um, steps to, to, that you've prepared in taking down this, uh, this, this story with James? Uh, yeah, we didn't do that. You didn't do any planning? No, we didn't plan on this film. Okay. Usually we do, but not on this film. Okay, so you just kind of jumped into it.
Okay, so introduce yourself, uh, your character name, uh, a little bit about the story, the plot line of the story, and the breakdown of Buffy. Okay, so you want me to describe the story as far as my partner and how crazy she is and she's... Yeah, the story in general, well, introduce oh. yourself, explain the story in general, and then break down Buffy. Hi, I'm Roxanne Mari, and I play the part of Buffy, the Barbie cop. The movie Crushed, it is about a poor man named Wilbur that goes through a series of dates that are just completely wrong. Every date is absolutely horrendous and treats him pretty bad. And then there's also another character, <clears throat> my partner Brittany, who tortures this man throughout the movie. Um, everything he does wrong, she is there to harass him. And in the end, they fall in love. It is a great, sad love story. Let's see, Buffy. Um, Buffy is the ditzy cop. I, I definitely share something with my character. I identify with her because I do have that ditziness about me. And I loved playing her. I mean, she's, she's really fun. She's constantly scolding Brittany. Um, Brittany is more the serious one. She takes her job seriously. She is the ideal cop. Uh, Buffy, on the other hand, is completely opposite. She doesn't take anything seriously. Um, she really kind of just is more about her appearance, how she looks. And the relationship is, I see a friendship in Brittany, and Brittany really doesn't care too much about me. I think she's kind of sad that she got stuck with me. Okay, keep going. Uh, as an outro, tell me why uh, the, the world should see this movie. Why the world should see this movie? I think everyone needs to see this movie. It is an amazing comedy, well written, hilarious. Every character brings something. I mean, every character has a great personality, a great, I don't know, sense of humor. In general, I think you can identify with this, with this movie because you know what? All of us have been crushed at one point, in another, one point or another. We have all been crushed. And it is just a great, fun movie to see, I think. Short and sweet. Short and sweet, yeah. Have you guys been quiet down for me? Settle, please. Action. Well, first and foremost, I want to thank uh, James Cahill, uh, Patty, and Paul Allback for uh, the opportunity they gave me to um, assist them with this uh, production. Um, it's been quite an experience, to say the least. I, uh, I know I'm going to leave the, today with uh, very memorable moments, uh, some challenging moments. Uh, also, I think I want to take this time to thank the, thank the crew. I think that uh, you know you can only lead as much as uh, your crew uh, is willing to allow you to. And I want to thank them for their hard work, uh, dedication, and uh, uh, for putting up with uh, some of the uh, you know hollering and hooting that was taking place throughout some of the days um, and long nights. Uh, once again, thank you. Uh, I hope I don't leave anybody out. You know, Kenny, great DP there. Uh, you know, Tariq, Aaron, Pepe, wonderful guy to have around. Aaron, uh, Andrew, uh, Monica, you know, I just want to thank all of them for a, a job well done. Uh, Mickey, you know, I can't say enough. Uh, everyone here has gone uh, far and beyond uh, their scope of duty and uh, really done as much as they could to make sure this production uh, got gone in its way and that uh, we were able to complete it on time and way ahead of schedule. So. Uh, as assistant director, uh, you know, it's just my job to make sure that things are, are, are moving. Um, you know, I kind of make sure that everyone's doing their job and that we are uh, uh, moving along as quickly and as uh, efficiently as possible. Um, I've known James Cahill for quite a long time. Uh, it's been almost, uh, you know, quite a, quite a few years. I've known him since he shot his first production, and uh, he's truly evolved and grown tremendously from the time when we were working out of his garage garage, and uh, we were using my truck basically for craft services, love scenes, uh, you know, drive-bys, name it. Uh, but it's been a long process and I'm uh, really proud to say the least of uh, how much he's, uh, he's accomplished in, uh, in such a short time. I, I, I truly wish him the best of luck and uh, you have my support 100%. Uh, once again, this, this this production has been quite a challenge, uh, to say the least. It's uh, we've been up against time constraints at locations, uh, been probably you know removed from others, uh, broken a couple of uh, benches here and there that uh, we probably end up having to pay for. 
Uh, but, you know, for the most part, the crew and everyone, the staff, the cast members, the talent, everyone's, you know, stepped up to the plate. They've all, you know, performed efficiently and uh, without question, extremely well. And I want to congratulate all of them and I wish them tremendous su success uh, in their careers. And hopefully one day I'll get to see them on uh, the big screen. Um, but again, you know, uh, without mention, I got to say to my family, hey, I'm sorry that I was gone for so long, but I'll be coming home soon. And uh, I miss you guys. Thank you. And tell me real quick, as an outro, um, why uh, the world should go to support this film. Uh, you know what? I think that this film um, is, uh, it gives that person who may not have a true belief and they have an opportunity in finding true love and uh, uh, true love and feeling towards one another. And uh, I, I, I cut. I, <laughs> let me do it again. Yeah, yeah. I just... <laughs> I, I had to think about that one a little bit more. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm good. Uh, I think people should come on and see this film because uh, you're not going to believe the ending once you get there. And uh, it's really going to surprise you. And you'll go home laughing and enjoying yourself 100%. I, I truly believe that. Uh, it, I don't think you've seen anything like that in Main Street movies these days. And uh, for a change, we got some, you know, some spice and sugar added to, to the mix, which always makes for a good combination. And... I, I recommend it highly because I truly think that the ending and, you know, some of the plots and the scenes of the way things were played out, you know, there were funny scenes where, you know, things worked out in ways that you wouldn't imagine they were going to work out that way. So I really, truly feel that you're really going to be surprised when you get there. I, I, I'm, I'm good with that. I can't put that one together. I'm sorry. Okay, you can start. You know what? Start working on that now. Great, okay. Patty. Thank you. So, um... Tell me your name, the character's name, and break down, what's the name of your character? Ross. Break down Ross, his background, his motivation, and his story. Okay. And what he's trying to achieve. Okay? Action. My name's Albert Chan, and I play the character of Ross in Crushed. And, uh, Ross, this character is interesting. He's, uh, you know, a very prim and proper guy. He, I, I kind of feel like a, you know, a token Asian guy, and uh, it definitely feels nice. Um, uh, let me see, what else? Yeah, the motivation of the scenes are just, you know, I just, you know, I'm just uh, Wilbur's good friend. I think me and Ra, uh, me, Joey, and Chandler bring good, uh, you know, comedic relief to, uh, to Wilbur and uh, the rest of the scenes. I really want to thank... Um, Paul and James for uh, having me in this film. It's you know I feel so fortunate to be in a film where, you know, my race isn't mentioned once, and uh, it, definitely, it definitely feels good to uh, you know be in this type of project. And hopefully, you know, bigger and better things happen as a result of this, and we just go from there. Just tell me uh, quickly one of your favorite scenes and, uh, and how you picked on Will. Some of your most memorable lines. Memorable lines. I mean, jeez. Ah, uh, some of my most memorable scenes, lines. Ah, uh, man. Ah, <laughs> uh, let me think. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Outro. Tell me why uh, the world should go support this film. Actually. Yeah, I think uh, everyone should support this film because, uh, you know, the, the cast is very diverse. Uh, there's not a lot of films out there where, you know, you see the, you know, Asian guy, black guy, white guy, Hispanic guy, Middle Eastern guy. And this film is, uh, you know, it brings, you know, the melting pot of America together in a f comedy film. And, uh, you know, what more could we ask for? And, yes, I say support your local independent films and uh, just go from there. Tell me your experience of working with the cast and crew these past seven days or however how long you've been working. Hi, I'm Blair Teal and I play Joey. You know, it was a big stretch for me playing Joey. How do I look? Do I look really good? Great, thank you. Um, what did I like about the character? Let me see. Probably the fact that it was completely opposite of who I am. And it was, 
It was a bit of a stretch, really. Um, it was fun playing with all these other guys, and it, it didn't even seem like work to us. Um, James Cahill had a um, really good insight in terms of what he wanted out of the project, even before we got on set. So there wasn't a lot of lag time in terms of trying to figure out what we needed to do and going through the rehearsals. He knew exactly where we needed to be. And what I loved too about working with James was if we had any type of creativity that we wanted to throw into the character, he loved it. And um, that's what's great is working with a director that can work very closely with the actor and really develop the character. Uh, my character was a guy that loved himself almost too much, more so than anyone on the set. And at times there was comedy there, but deep down he really wanted Wilbur to succeed and he tried to deliver as much as he could in terms of his recommendations. Pretty straightforward guy. And why should everyone come see this film? Well, besides the fact that I'm in it, um, probably, it's just, I don't know. It's such a feel-good romantic comedy. And if anyone's been on a blind date before, you feel the pain in this movie. You really do. And it really lets you know that you never know when level bite. And it bites back in a funny way. Working with the crew, it, it was a lot of fun. Um, these guys definitely had it together. Um, particular Fabian, which was kind of the drill sergeant, um, almost kind of a full metal jacket style. But um, he kept us in line. He really did. We have whip marks to prove it. But um, I'm feeling a lot better now. Well, that's it, because I have nothing else to say, because I'm not getting paid for this little tiny little bit that we're talking about and I only do things unless I get paid triple time. So good luck to all of you out there watching this. You're gonna enjoy one heck of a movie.